As I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation, cause he'll never let me down, yeah, yeah. he'll never, he'll never let me down. Wait, I'm sorry, we're recording. Guys, I'm sorry, I was rocking to my favorite hit, but that's okay, it works because we are now starting our new series called Anthem. We're gonna be talking a lot about music over the next few weeks, but if you're not really musically inclined and you would rather listen to a podcast, that's okay. If you don't wanna sing, don't worry. We're gonna talk about a lot more than just music. But before we jump in today, if you're, if you're joining us for the first time, we would love to connect with you. Check out that link in our description, or if you're watching on Instagram, head to the link in our bio and fill out the guest card. We want to know who is watching with this online. Guys, I'm Stephen Love and I'm the worship development coordinator here at Manor Church. So, assuming you listen to at least a little bit of music, here's what I'm wondering. If you could create a greatest hit album for your favorite artist, who would you pick? And what would be the first song be? The greatest hit album, favorite artist, who would you choose? What would the first song be? For me, I'd have to say a little bit of Torn Wells mixed with some Tori Kelly, Carrie Job, and we can't forget Maverick City. Y'all, this album would be dope. For the next few weeks, we're going to be exploring a big collection of songs and poems that are kind of like the greatest hit album, except this album is about God. So in case you're wondering, what's the big idea? What's the big idea? I'm glad you asked. By the end of this study, we want you to understand that you were designed to worship with all creation. You see, we can trace our identity and our purpose for creation all throughout scripture, beginning in Genesis. In Genesis chapter one, verses 26, it says, let us make man in our image. You see, that is the purpose of our creation. That is to glorify and worship the Father. Right now, you see, God is inviting you to live in his glory by fulfilling his purpose that he's made for you. This must be the song of our lives and the anthem of our heart. That is to glorify God. It's literally the only way to live. Everything else is just existing. You see, David understand, understood the existence of living all too well. In fact, scripture actually calls him a man after God's own heart. Today, David would have been more like your modern Keith Urban or maybe Chris Brown, and I do mean Chris Brown from Elevation Worship. You see, David was a songwriter. He wrote all of the greatest hits. In Psalms 19, one through six, he explains, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech night after night they reveal knowledge they have no speech they use no words no sound is heard from them yet their voices go out into all the earth their words to the end of the world in the heavens god has pitched a tent for the sun it is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber like a champion rejoicing to run his course it rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. Man, listen to these bars. David has bars for days. Here we see in the scripture that David is descriptively explaining how God reveals himself, literally through nature, and how we are surrounded by the display of God's craftsmanship. God's creation displays a dramatic evidence of his existence, his love, 
his power, and his purpose for our lives. Man, I love what Romans 1 and 20 reads. It says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. So just to say that the universe and all that exists within it, including both you and I, just so happened by chance, is absurd. God's creation is a true affliction of his personality and his intentionality for all creation. You see, our creation was an intentional design to live a life of worship with all creation. We were stamped by the creator, created on purpose, and for a purpose. Which poses the question, if your life was a song, what would others hear? More importantly, what would God hear? Does the life that you sing, the life that you live, sing a song of hope, a song of trust and love? Songs that give honor to God, or do others hear songs of doubt, loneliness, and fear? You know, we've heard so many songs that have been written about so many different struggles. We hear songs about doubt. We hear songs about loneliness and fear. But what I'm really most interested in is the songs that move me, songs that speak of God's goodness, songs that point back to the fact that Jesus is Lord of all things, songs that tell the story of his omnipotence and omnipresence. David drops a few more bars in Psalms 139 verses 1 through 7 saying, You have searched me, O Lord, and you know me. You know me when I sit and when I rise. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways before a word is on my tongue. You, Lord, you knew it completely. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me to even understand, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Here's the thing. Sometimes we don't let people get close to us. We don't do that because we're afraid of the fact that they may discover something about us that they don't really like. But instead of changing the lyrics of the reality of who we are, I want to challenge you, do something different. God doesn't work that way. God doesn't judge us based upon the things that we say and do to change the way that he feels about us. Everything about us, God already knew. Literally, he knows it all about us, even down to the hairs on our head. Yet, he still accepts us, he still loves us. So rather than deleting, Instead of running down and turning the things about us uh, that are not really genuinely attached to our personality and who we are, I encourage you, commit to writing a new song, a song that worships with all creation, an anthem that glorifies the awesomeness and majesty of God. My prayer today is that your anthem would begin to shift as you go through the next series. May you remember that God is with you in every situation and in every trial. God is omnipresent and because of this, you will never be lost. You see, you've been found and strategically designed for His glory, worshiping with all creation. Thank you so much for joining us in our new series. If you have further questions, please click the discussion questions below and we'll stay connected.